Wherever you are, come and get ready for the words. God is making a way for his people. And I believe you are in that number. I trust God today as we enter into the third Sunday of August. See, God has been ministering to us, talking to us, that when you are going through those difficult times, he says, I will be with you. When you are going through the waters, it will not swallow you up. He says, when you pass through the fire, it will not consume you. What a faithful God. You know, uh, God spoke ahead of time, and it, it, it gave me an insight that in August we should talk about proof, uh, storm proof your life. I, I, I don't, don't know what it is. I, I, in obedience, I said, God, okay, whatever we need to talk about. I didn't know that there will be a major storm that will be ravaging nations, that will be aff affecting families, affecting people, affecting uh, 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 even the globe as a whole. See, God knows ahead. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is ahead of us. And there is nothing that happened to us as children that comes to him as a surprise. See, God is on the face of time. He's in the past, the present, and he continues trust the future. I want you to relax this morning and know there is a God who is sitting in the affairs of your life. He says, storm proof your life. Now I can understand what that means. Many of you are going through storm today. Many of you are coming out of one or entering into one. Some of you, you are in the center of it. God is saying to you that I know and I got your back. This morning, I'm going to continue that message. And uh, the Holy Spirit quickened this world during the week, and I, I had it very clear that I should talk to you about winning and thriving in the storm of life. You know, some people think that when you are in the storm, it is lose-lose. But do you know that you can win even in the storm of life? So today, I want you to prepare your heart together, wherever it is, whatever it is, Going on in your life, God is saying, you can win. You can win. You can even thrive in spite of the storm that is ravaging the land. You know, we are living in a dangerous time in the country. Corona has eaten many people's confidence. COVID-19 has bruised and battered the fate of many people. And there are so many that have surrendered in defeat. Yet, there are many people in the midst of this storm who are having the best times of their lives. What I'm saying to you people of God this morning is you can win in spite of what is going on in your life. I'm going to read to you Isaiah chapter 26 verse number 3. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. I want to give you a mindset today. I call it developing a winning mindset. You see, it's a, a lot has to do with what is going on in your mind. If you see what I see today, I say you are a winner. In spite of what the devil throws at you, in spite of what is going wrong, I don't want you to lose and, and give up, develop a winning mindset. You can win, you can thrive in spite of what is happening in our nation. Isaiah 26 verse 3, if you are there in that scripture, see the scripture says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Not just peace, it says a perfect one. When God is your keeper, when God is watching your life, it doesn't matter what is going on around you. It says he, you, he will keep you in perfect peace. But there is a condition. It says, whose mind is stayed on him. See, God is giving a promise to everyone today. No matter the storm you are going through, you can win in the storm. Here is the key. You will keep him in perfect peace. When all hell broke loose, you will keep him in perfect peace. When the children seem to be sick and the finances are done, you will keep him in perfect peace. When there are rumors of lay out, lay off on the job, yeah, God said, I will keep you in perfect peace. Here is the condition. Whose mind is stayed on thee because... It trusted thee. I want you to hold to that scripture for one minute. 
See, God is saying today, you can win and you can thrive in the storm of life. And I sense in this scripture that one thing that matters when you are going through the storm is your mindset. Your mind has to be in the right place. You got to focus on the right object. See, peace is not the absence of storm, but serenity in spite of it. See, when we talk about perfect peace, it doesn't mean storm is not present. In spite of the storm, God says, you will have your peace. Others may run around, break loose down, I mean, break out things, are upside down. You will have your peace. I read a story about a king who invited painters several years ago. He wanted them to depict for him. He wanted them to paint peace. And it's kind of a challenge. How do you paint peace? How could you bring the picture of peace? Here was the contest. So painters came from everywhere. They stirred up their imaginations. Artists were painting things. And they were drawing what they thought could be peace. And as the king was looking at all the pictures, one by one, he would uncover it. He would start to throw it aside. No, that doesn't qualify. Some people drew blue sea. Yeah, yeah, that looked quiet, but that's not what I'm looking for. See, it is too peaceful to be peaceful. You see, the king was looking for something. And so at the end of the day, there was one picture, one picture that qualified. See, the king uncovered that last painting. And the crowd gasped in surprise. Could this be the peace? Could this be the winning picture? And so the, 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 in that picture, see the, the, the painter described in his painting how the storm was going ugly. See the heaven was black with, with, with cloud, hungry with, with cloud. And everything seems to be falling as, a, apart, falling in the wrong direction. The mountain was, was pouring water. And the wind was strong and blowing. Everything seems to be foaming and confused. But in the middle of all of that storm was this little bird. And sitting quietly on that line, sitting on that wire, not moved, not bothered. See, not because there was no storm, not because things were perfect, but he had his peace. May I speak to your family today? You will have your peace. No matter what the devil has taken from your life, I get it back for you this morning. In the name of Jesus, come and shout with me. Peace in the midst of the storm. Our word today is, how can I have peace when there is storm around me? We can be winners in the midst of storms. In Psalm 23, verse number 4 and 5. Psalm 23, you are familiar with Psalm 23, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't know what that really means, but I know it must be a scary place. He says, I may be walking in the valley. I see shadows. You see, it's not dying. It's not dead yet. But he said, I am seeing shadows. You know, when you are seeing shadows of death, that must be a fearful place to be. He says, yeah, I may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will fear no evil. Yeah, there are so many things that want me to panic, but I will not be afraid. Why? Because of what I know. I'm talking to you today. It is about your mindset. This man said, I know something for you are with me. I don't know who is with you today, but he says, I know that God is there with me. I may not feel it. I may not see it, but I know my mind is settled on him. So today I want you to, to just think about it for a few minutes. Some of you are going through some situations, truly, and that situation is perplexing. It's overwhelming. When people say, ah, when they see your situation, it must be terrible. You know, situations, stories you heard, and people say, oh my God. You know, that, that is really a scary story to tell. But God said, in spite of that, you can be a winner. You can have your peace. In fact, you can thrive in the middle of that storm. 
Now I'm talking about your mindset, developing a winning mindset. See, that scripture we read earlier, Isaiah 26, 26, verse 3. It was focused on the mind. He said, whose mind? It is your mind. Your mind is the center of the battle. Your mind, your mindset is one of the weapons that will cause you either to win or to lose this war. Jesus was, has given us abundant life to enjoy, but your mindset can shut you out of it. You know, when we were reading the other day, two Sundays ago, in Mark chapter 4, Jesus was traveling with his disciples. And the Bible tells us something that was a little bit off the story. How can you put these two things together? The scripture said in Mark chapter 4 verse 38, if you can jump there very quickly. The Bible says, and he was in the inner part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. I mean, I underline that in my scripture, in my Bible. How can you sleep? In the middle of a storm, people of God, Jesus knew something his disciples didn't know. Everybody was running all over, panic stricken. Throw something out, throw something in. Peter, jump up. Peter, sit down. Andrew, you are too heavy, too heavy for the boat. You are the reason we are good. Come on. Jesus was having a siesta. <laughs> and I want to say to everyone hearing me today, in the middle of this crisis, this is going to be your best time in the name of Jesus. Oh, I have had testimonies. I've had people who receive packages, who receive double promotion. And I say, wow, even in pandemic, God is a master designer. Can you see the boat? You look at the picture. How can a person sleep in the middle of this? It, because there is something it is, in fact, I would say Jesus was in a different world. He was not in their world. Did that remind me a story I, I heard years ago about a respected man of God. He was flying in a plane one day, and that plane suddenly hit a storm. The whole machine was a roller coaster. It appeared it was going to fall out of the sky. So the believers inside the plane immediately, they panicked and they fished at each other and quickly they joined their hands together and they began to do all manner of prayer. Some were binding, some were loosing, some were all kind of prayers. It was a very tough time. But here was this man of God. See, to their surprise, he did not join the prayer meeting. In fact, he sat down and he was sleeping and was resting. So wondering why, they approached him and said, Sir, how come you didn't come to join us? We will respect you. Use your authority here. He simply told them nothing is wrong with this plane. He said nothing is going to happen. This plane is okay. They couldn't believe it. They said, Sir, are you sure we are talking of the same thing? Are we not in the same plane? And the man said, well, maybe we are not in the same plane. Yeah, truly, you are not, we are not in the same plane. Because God told me before I left my city of the assignment I'm going in the next city. He didn't make arrangement about plane crash. No, we are not in the same plane. You know what that says? We might be facing the same situation, but we are operating on different frequency because of what we know. So he sat down. He didn't join the prayer meeting. He continued his sleep. Of course, at the end of the story, there was no plane crash. When they all came out of the plane, they said, sir, we salute your faith. How could you sleep in the middle of such a crisis? My friend, it's about your mindset. It's about who you know. It's about what you carry. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, Paul said, I know whom I believed. I am persuaded whatever I have committed into his hand, he will see through. I want you to hold on to his word today. Your mindset can decide if you will lose in this battle. Your mindset can make you a winner. Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 7. If you can look at that for a few minutes. Proverbs 23, verse 7. It says, for as he, that a person, as he, a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. 
As a man is thinking, so is he. In other words, there is a battle going on right now in your mind. I wish you could show them a picture. See, in your mind, there is a fight. See, uh, show me the next slide. There is a fight going on. See, your mind is a battleground. Look at that. There is uh, two forces. They are fighting to dominate you. Human mind is the seat of thought, intelligence, and imagination. It is also the strategic place where battles are fought. We are what we think, this scripture says. And what we do, your mind is the target of the devil. And it is from there you will win or you will lose. Whatever is going on this morning, I'm glad to tell you, out of the many things that we can do to win in a storm, one of them that is very critical is to stay calm in your mind. Your mind is strategic. If you think failure, you will fail. If you think defeat, you will be defeated. That's why Romans chapter 12 verse 2 tells us, it says, be not confirmed, to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. May I say to you, people of God, your mind is not born again. That is a fact we know. Your mind is not that spiritual. It is your spirit that got born again when you give your life to Jesus. You have a responsibility about your mind. Whatever you permit to come in, whatever door you open to it, that is the door, that, that is the force that will dominate you. This scripture says you have to do something. Do it continually. And what is that? Renew your mind. Push out the rubbish. Don't think failure. Don't think defeat. See, the limit most of, you, most of us face in our tough time is many times based on our minds. Before we fail, we have actually failed. You know, it just remind me of the story of the woman who was in a car that was face to face with an oncoming vehicle. Everybody was shouting and scared and scared of their life. And of course, the driver worked so hard he averted that accident. That accident did not happen. But do you know after that accident, somebody died in that car. Nobody touched her. Nobody, no, 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 no collision. She died. What killed her? See, so many things happened to many of us and you already failed at the level of your mind. Bad thoughts that has crippled you. They are forerunners of bad behaviors. The things you have thought about, they have eaten your confidence. I want you to take your confidence again. No matter how strong, how beautiful God has made you, if your mind betrays you, you will be worthless. I want to say to you today, develop a mindset of a winner. I have a shame. Please give me the next point. Say, you cannot be a lion and thinking like a rat, you will die like a rat. If your thought is thinking like a rat, he said, you can count on it, you will behave like a rat. In other words, your mindset is critical. So, in talking about this subject, I want to share with you some three things that weaken and paralyze your mind. If we are talking about thriving in the middle of a storm, in other words, storm may be raging and you can be walking. Look at the scripture we read earlier on that was given to us during the Bible, uh, Bible reading. Here was a storm that was raging. Here everybody was panicking and Jesus was walking on this. I pray today, some of you hearing me, you will walk on that storm. I, I said that storm will surrender to you. See, the man or the, 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 the son of God, he has authority over nature, over storm, over time and season. The Bible said the storm was blowing. It was in the night. And Jesus walked over it. Oh, may you have that authority today. You will trample upon Ada, upon serpent, upon lions. Everyone that is roaring against you on your job place, I command their mouth to be shut. Everyone that is looking for your downfall, they will wait forever. They will be disappointed. Why? Because you will work on it. 
I'm speaking, I had in my spirit, I'm speaking to someone today, there's something brewing, something cooking, conspiracy going on on your job, and they are, they are scheming things, they are planning without you, but hear the word of God, if you take this word this morning, I see you walking on that storm, you actually going to be promoted by that storm. The, that storm was meant to sink you, but that storm will pick you up and expose you to great opportunity. Come on, if you are the one I'm talking to, agree and say amen in the name of Jesus. So we saw Jesus walking on the storm. He was just, you know, he, he was like no big deal. And uh, when he was walking, Peter saw him say, oh, oh, this is, is it who is walking? They were first of all afraid. They thought it was a, it was a spirit. And Jesus said, come on, boys, don't be afraid. It is I. And then Peter said, oh, if it is you, ask me to come. You know, I, I, I can walk like you. Even though the storm is raging, even though the, the wind is blowing, but I can walk over it. I want to say to you today, this is a factor of your mindset. And what are the things the enemy throw at us to kill our confidence? Devil will hit you very hard with negative thoughts. It will hit you with doubt and discouragement. Why? Because he wants you to be defeated. Three voices. Number one, the voice of fear. See, that is going to try to attack you. That was what happened to Peter. He was already walking. He was already thriving. And the storm was submitted to him. And suddenly the Bible says he looked around. Oh, you have been looking around. Come and focus your eyes on the Lord. The storm will rage. There's nothing you can do about that. But the Lord said, I got your back. You just keep coming. Look at me. Keep your focus. Let your mind stay on me. That is what God is saying today. So Peter started looking around and he started listening to some voices. The Bible says he saw the boisterous wind. You see, he saw the storm. He heard something. The wind was loud. Make a noise. We are going to kill you. You are a failure. Some of you are hearing voices like that. They say you are useless. This corona is going to get you sometime. Maybe it's going to even kill you. Oh, I said to the devil, you are a liar. All the bad word you are hearing Hearing, they are creating fear in your spirit. Shut out that voice. Of course, Peter heard the voice. And I guess the folks in the, in the boat, they were not keeping quiet too. They were just wondering, Peter, are, 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 you, are you crazy? Is this real? Peter, are you sure? This is, it could be a ghost. It could be a devil. It could be a demon. There may be voices coming from the boat. All these voices, all this opinion, you know what they do? They choke our faith. So for a split second, Peter took his eyes away. He took his eyes away from the rock. See, the Bible says the word of God is like a rock. When you stand on it, it supports your weight. But when you shift from the rock, you will sink. He took his eyes from the word. What was the word? Come. That was the word. The word went with authority. Come. See, he was able. The word can sustain him in the midst of that storm. But he took his, his eyes away from the word. He was hearing the words of others. I want to say to you today, number one, the voice of fear will choke. I will enter to your mind. Number two, the voices of doubt. The enemy will speak it to you. Who do you think you are? Nobody made it this far in your family. Think about Gideon. See, Gideon was getting himself ready. He wanted to go to a fight. And the devil said, who do you think you are? You are the least in your family. Nobody ever made it to you. See, he looked at the catalog of failure in his family and he saw himself in the shadow of his family. When you look into the mirror today. What do you see? Some of you, you see yourself as going down. You see yourself as poor. I want you to change that mindset. That is the mindset of a loser. That is the voice of doubt. I see you this morning. You are a winner. Even though you are beaten and you are bleeding. I say today you are a winner. Wicked thoughts are being pumped into your spirit. The devil is saying so much to you. This problem is going to kill you. I'm going to make sure you don't succeed in this land. Tell the devil, shut it down. Because I will thrive in my storm. Look at that voice of doubt. 
voice of doubt. The enemy is playing trick with your mind. The third one is the anxiety. Attack of anxiety. What are the things that can weaken and paralyze your mind? Don't forget, your mind is strategic in this fight. If you lose it at the, at the point of the mind, you will lose it elsewhere. So the enemy focus on your mind. It rains arrows on your mind. It tells you, forget it. You don't have what it takes. People hate you. You are not smart. You are not sharp. You are not gifted as, as others. And so on. The list continues. It makes you to be anxious. You remember this uh, small story? I, I love that story. Each time I think about it, Death was going to a village and he was asked, Mr. Death, what do you really want to go? They said, I just want to go kill one man. When I get to that village, I promise you one man. And we were told that when Death was returning from the trip, 100 people already dead. So they confronted and said, Mr. Death, but you told us you're only going to kill one man. He said, yes, I only killed one. The fear that I was coming killed the other 99. I don't know what is killing your faith right now. You see, the statistics are not so encouraging. We are hearing every now and then. They told us that millions of people are sick. COVID has killed many. Millions are currently jobless. How many thousands of businesses have closed down? See, the statistics are scary. But I want to say to you, look at the living word, the word of God. You will write this storm. In fact, you will thrive in it. I'm not just talking about surviving the storm. I'm talking about thriving in the storm. Oh, if I'm talking to you this morning, I want you to shout in your, in your spirit, hey, man, I agree, pastor. See, the, the enemy is trying to sow seed in your, in your mind. I love to say this word. It says, a calm mind is the ultimate weapon against your battles. Look at that. A calm mind. If you are going to win this battle, see, because thoughts are seed, are seed words that the devil will try to sow in your mind. It will make the environment to control you instead of you dominating the environment. You think too small, and that's why you are too small. The problem you are dealing with is swallowing you because you have said it in your mouth, this problem will kill you. I thought about the woman, the Shunammite woman. You remember that woman? See, the, Elisha prayed in their family. This woman got a child, even though her husband was very old. And of course, the boy grew up. And the Bible says one day, the boy was dead. He actually started crying. Cry my head, my father, my head, my head. The dad rushed him, took him to the house. And there, the Bible says, the boy died. But look at the behavior of the Shunammite woman. See, she faced a, a storm with what she knows. Every time every, anybody asks her, woman, how is the boy? Say, oh, all is well. Even though the boy died, even to the husband, say, oh, the boy is well. When this lady went to look for Elisha, he said, Elisha, you need, I need your help now. And when Gehazi, what's going on with your son? Say, all shall be well. It is about your mindset. What are you thinking today? Our past failure and our sins, many times, they limit our opportunity. Our circumstances are seemingly impossible. Our perception of the pleasant and the unfavorable circumstances we face, they choke our mind. But I want you to rise above it that when the story of this situation is told, I will stay on top of it. Now, the question is, what is a mindset? Let me just give you a very quick word about that. What is a mindset? I'm saying you can develop the mindset of a winner. What is a mindset? Mindset are those collections of beliefs, the thought that makes your mental attitude, your inclination, your habit, your opinion, the things you do, the things you don't do. There are things over time that has constituted what you believe. Mindset. In other words, your mind is set on things. So that whether they are right or wrong, your mind is set on them. And so they control your circumstances. But today, I want you to develop a winning mindset. Come and say with me, I am a winner. 
I am not a loser. Let me give you a quickly. What, how does a loser's mindset look like? See, look at that in the next slide. You see, the loser's mindset, always, I can't. Even when people say there is opportunity, I can't. The word I can't is so close in his mouth. Every little thing, I say, oh my God, oh my God, this is impossible. It's all negative. And that's why you felt that you are behind. Because your mind is already killing you. Number two, you could see that. Say, this is hard and impossible. See, a, a loser's mindset dwell in the past. The past of what they used to be. How it used to be good. They tell story. Oh, I remember those jolly good days. But God said, no, that's a loser's mind. Look into the future. Your future is still in front of you. So don't have a loser's mind. It's pessimistic. Every little thing is he allowed the, the now to determine the next. That is a pessimistic situation. Say, look at it. They said the economy is bad. I don't know if I'm going to keep my job. It's already, I mean, afraid and constantly worrying and stressed out. I want to say to you today, change, switch it around. I am not a loser. I am a winner. I'm speaking to people of God this morning. In spite of your storm, you are a winner. Come and say with me, I am a winner. I want to show you the traits of, uh, of someone who is a winner. How do you know a winner? How do you know someone who is conquered? Come on, show us the next slide. Just look at the two, this next slide. It shows the winners and the losers. The winners say it, it may be difficult, but it is possible. Why the winner, the losers say it may be possible, but it's too difficult. You could see how the flip of the world. It may be difficult, but it is possible. That's what a winner say. A loser say it may be possible, but it is difficult, too difficult. The winner see the gain. The loser see the pain. The winner see possibilities. A loser see problems. The winner make it happen. The loser let it happen. You see, whatever is going to be, will be. What is the mindset of a winner? Three C's. Write this for yourself. Three C's that are traits of a person who has a conqueror mindset. I'm saying today, no matter what you have faced, you can thrive. What are the three C's? Number one is confidence. A winner, a person who is going to ride the storm. Number one thing is as the first C is confidence. He prays with confidence. Speaks with confidence. He faces opposition with confidence. He knows that his God will not fail. No, I want to say to you today, come on, de develop a confident mentality that your God is faithful. Each time I think about George Muller, you know the story of this man called George Muller. Each time I think about the story, his story always amused me. I mean, he, he was like he was living outside of this world. George Muller had an orphanage where he fed orphans. And he made up his mind, the one thing I will not do as I start this project, I will not beg a man for a dance. Can you imagine such a decision? He said, everything about this orphanage, we're going to channel it by prayer. We're going to trust God to do it. And so you know the story. Some of you have heard this story from me. So one particular time, there was no food in the, in, in, in this, uh, in the orphanage. Everything was dry. Everything was out. And uh, the, the servant panicked. They rushed out to George. We are in trouble. There is nothing for the children to eat now. So what do we do? What do we do? George said, come on, let's go pray. Ask the children to go to the dining. Let's all pray together. The question said, pray? I thought you are going to make a call. I thought you are going to call somebody. I thought you are going to ask him, what about prayer? He said, our God, we make way. He knows the situation. So George Muller get everybody together. They prayed. And he asked the children to sit around the table. All of you get ready. Pray over your meal. Can you imagine there was no bread? There was no milk. And they were praying for what? <laughs> but God came through. As the children were finishing prayer, opening their cup, suddenly there was a rush, a knock, very loud knock on the door. The, the baker rushed bread in. He was even apologizing. I hope I am not too late. Because 2 a.m. this morning, 2 a.m., God woke me up. He asked me to begin to bake bread. Oh, can you see God who had foreseen your need? He knows exactly where you are right now. So the baker began to bake bread 2 a.m. in the morning. 
And then, of course, it was just the right one. And as the man was rushing the bread in, and they, and they were still worried about the meek, the meek man was passing by. He was taking his truck across the village. In front of the orphanage, he had a flat tire. And of course, he didn't know what to do with his car truck. He didn't know what to do with the milk. He said, can somebody tell me, where can I give this milk? And somebody said, over there, that is the orphanage. Go there, they will use it. I want to say today that there's a God who is watching you. He knows exactly your balance in the in Sun Trust, your, your bank account. He knows what you have left in West Fargo. He knows it. You may, you may sh not show people, but he knows exactly your balance. But there's a God who is faithful. This is the point, people of God. Confidence in God. Be confident in his ability. Number two thing that a person of con conqueror's mindset has is conviction. You need to harm yourself with these three C's. He is convicted. He faces every task with conviction. He will not quit in the face of difficulties. Number three is courage. He confronts every situation with courage that no matter what, I will win this battle. I want to say today, this morning, you will win this battle. No matter what the devil throws at you, you will win this battle. The giants may be on our way, but I want you to release your faith. See, in the middle of, uh, in the midst of the night, faith sings. Faith says all is possible. Show me that next picture. See, there's a picture of a cat that was looking into the mirror. I love to use this to teach in the, in the, in the, in the leadership development class. He was looking into the mirror, and what did he see? See, you say, where is so wrong? He was a cat looking and seeing lion. See, this cat is seen right. If you are going to win this battle, you got to see right. You have to see your God inside of you. That no matter what battle you fight, God will win this battle for you. Oh, I see you coming up on top of this problem. In the mighty name of Jesus. There's a lion inside of you. It's called the lion of the tribe of Judah. There was this story I, I was reading about a, in a movie. See, the, in this movie, a lion, or just like a video, a lion was coming out. And he was looking at a small beer, you know, little baby beer. And was looking afar. And said, ah, this is dinner for tonight. The lion was coming majestically. He has seen this beer and said, well, I'm just going to finish him. And the beer didn't know, the little cub didn't know what to do. This little cub stood on his back leg, raised his little paws up, and let forth a high pitch grow. Oh. <laughs> you know, what, what can he do? You know, if, if lion could talk, he say, wow, you are kidding me. What can you do? <laughs> See, as the, as the be little bear was crying, oh, somebody help me. And then suddenly, we're looking at, looking at the movie. You saw the lion. He just took a step backward and just turned around and started running. I mean, what happened? What changed? I mean, this little bear scared this biting lion? No. So the camera just panned a little. And right there behind the little bear cup was his mama, the grizzly bear mama. That was what the lion saw. The lion said, ah, no, I see you. And turned around. I want to say to you today, no matter what you face, the lion of the tribe of Judah is standing behind you. He never take his eyes away. You will not lose in this battle. I say you will win and you will have dominion in the mighty name of Jesus. It's enough now. I want to close just because of the time we have. I would have loved to talk to you about the grasshopper mindset that many of us have. Just like the story of Caleb and Joshua and the ten spies were sent out. See, they came back with negative report. See, what they saw, everybody said things differently based on what their mindset is telling them. Ten of them said, no, when we got there, we saw ourselves like grasshopper. Even in the sight of these people, they were going to heat us up. You know, we, we can't do this at all. And then Caleb said, no, what we saw is different. Even though we were looking at the same thing. See, these folks, the ten people, they saw the giant. But Caleb and, and, and Joshua said, no, but we saw God. 
See, our God is bigger than this giant you were, you were talking about. See, what was different, it was in the perspective. See, the ten spies, they saw the foes. But Joshua and Caleb, they saw the fruit. See, the fruit is big. We can take it. See, the ten spies, they saw the wall. That the wall is going to hit them. It's going to, it's going to swallow them. But Joshua and Caleb said, no, we saw that this wall will crumble. Think about David. When David showed up in the camp of Goliath, it was the mindset. Mindset. Goliath was all over the place and had been bamboozling everybody. Everybody was afraid. But David came around. He began to ask questions. Why is this guy insulting you? Why is this guy talking like this? Has nobody courageous to deal with him? I want to say to you today, the, the forces you are listening to over time, they will become part of you. You are afraid of your fear. And that's why your fear is killing your faith. But this morning, I want you to have a mindset of a winner. I will close with this. How do I develop the winner's mindset? Let's look at this very briefly as we close. Three things. Be careful what or who you are listening to. It matters. See, the, 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 the soldiers... They were listening to Goliath. Goliath was roaming on them. He was, he, he was hauling all kind of insult on their injury. Everybody was afraid. When they were cooking, they were thinking Goliath. When they were sleeping, Goliath was, was showing up in their dream. If two people were talking, they were talking usher so that Goliath won't hear. Goliath has already superimposed on their life. Look at David. He said, what, what, what is it? Let's go deal with this Goliath. And then the news came to Saul. And Saul said, hey, boy, you think you can deal with that? He said, no, my God is going to help me. I will finish this Goliath. I said to someone today, you, God will help you. The greater one of Israel you will stand with you. Goliath will kiss the dust and you will trample upon them. Whatever storm that is roaring against you today, I lift you up by the supernatural power of God. But watch what you are listening to. Be careful when you, when you listen to the enemy for too long. See, the fear of the enemy hits you. The fear of the enemy consumes you. Faith comes by hearing. Fear also comes by hearing. Reduce listening to the enemy 24-7. Listen to God. Number two, what do you do? Fortify your mind with the world. The word, the word. Speak the word. Shoot the word. Memorize the word. Confess the word. Then number three, speak faith. When everything else is done, when you don't know what else to, to say, speak Speak life. Speak faith. I want you to speak to the storm this morning as I close in prayer. Whatever storm that has eaten your life, that is confronting the foundation of your existence, let's rise together. Come and rise with me. In the name of Jesus, I speak to this storm. I am a winner. I have a winning mindset. I have a conquering mindset. I will defeat this trouble. I will overcome this problem. This problem, you was bow before me. I can do this. Oh, you heard of Caleb? He said, give me this mountain. I will not surrender to defeat. My father owned this land. I will achieve my goal. If that is your confession this morning, I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I arise with a mindset of a victor. I ride every storm of my life. I confront every Goliath facing me. In the mighty name of Jesus. As we close today, the Lord is saying to us, what are the strategies to ride the storm? Keep your mind in the right place. Focus your mind on him. When you don't know what else to do, release the word. Speak the word. Don't let your faith go down. Your faith matter in this battle. I wish I could tell you what four things your faith will do as we pray together. Please give that to the people very quickly. There are four things your faith will do. When you have that kind of faith, your faith is the winning. Your faith must, your, your faith must not quit. Number one day on the screen, you can follow that. Your faith calms the fear. And your faith confirms the future. You have not been in the future yet, but faith says we will get there. That is what your faith does. Your faith challenge your failure. And your faith lean on God. So don't let your faith go off. Don't quit. But don't forget today as we fight this battle, the game is won in the mind. 
have a winning mindset. Give me the last two slides just to see that picture. The game is in your mind. Have the winning mindset. Winners make it happen. Losers, let it happen. Are you a winner today or are you a loser? But I see you a winner. We're saying today you can ride this storm. You can thrive in it in spite of what you have gone through. Quote somebody this morning in your family and let's agree together as I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we say thank you because no storm is ever, ever can swallow your presence. There is no storm that can intimidate our God. You are master over the storm. So, Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Whatever is ravaging their health, whatever they are intimidating their lives, whatever bad news they have heard, whatever situations that is out of control, whatever circumstances that is overwhelming them, oh God of heaven, lift them up above the storm. Let the hand of the Lord sustain you. May the hand of God keep you. You will not sink. I say in Jesus' name, your faith will not go down. I speak life into your situation. Every dead and dying situation receive life. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak to that brother, to that sister that is struggling, fighting, financial storm, marital storm, health storm. Oh God, I say today you will make this brother, this sister, this family, you will thrive in spite of the storm. You will ride the storm. You will survive it. And by the grace of God, you will tell stories of victory. Father, we say thank you for hearing us. We praise you, God, for victory is ours. Anyone here this morning hearing my voice, you, are not, you have not given your heart to Jesus. I want you to say with me, Jesus, come to my heart now. I surrender my life to you. I ask you to forgive me my sin and write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Lord. I believe in Jesus' name. Amen. It is well with you today. As you go on this week, I want you to think the mindset of a winner. What you see, don't let it change your confession. Our confession must be stable. We must be consistent. We can say like Paul, I know whom I believe. And I am persuaded. That which I have committed to his hands, he will keep it. God bless you today. And I look forward to seeing you again during the week and next Sunday. In Jesus' name.